Hi, my name is Jerry Bartles and I'm a Civil Technical Specialist with Autodesk. The purpose of today's presentation is to show how we can increase the amount of information that can be stored on a point object within Civil 3D. Because sometimes a point number, an elevation, and a description just isn't going to be enough. So let's begin. What I have working for me today is I've got a, a park project where an arborist went out and collected a number of trees. And the information that they shipped us on the trees is in a traditional ASCII file format. So let's take a quick look at that file. When we look at it, we see what the arborist collected was a point number. They collected a northing, an easting, an elevation. They collected a description, but then they also gave us some additional information at the end, including species of the tree, the diameter, and also the condition. Now in our traditional civil package, these additional columns on the end wouldn't be something that we could deal with or work with very easily. We're usually limited by just standard description for each point. Well, in Civil 3D, we can extend the definition of the point object to easily include these additional attributes. So let's take a look at how we do that. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into Settings, and because we're dealing with points, we'll go to the Point Objects, and we're going to update the User-Defined Property Classifications for Points. So we'll right-click and we'll create a new classification. We'll make a new one that will hold the information for the species. We can give it a description, uh, what type of information will be held in there. In this case, a string is fine. I could put in a default value if none was supplied as NA. We'll say OK, and that's added to our list. Let's take and create another one. This one will hold the diameter, or as the arborists like to say, DBH for diameter at breast height. In this case, it won't be a string, but instead we'll be passing a numeric value, so I'm going to set that to distance of the many choices that I have to pick from. We can see that the number that is applied can be restricted by a very, very low number and a very, very high number. In our case, I'm not going to worry about getting too restrictive. I guess uh, this will be fine. Default value will be zero. That's good. If they didn't apply it, zero will be fine. And then we will finally add the last one. In this case, we'll put something in for condition. It too will be a string and we'll say not known if it was not applied. Alright, so the values have been put in. I can now bring in my points. If we were to import the points themselves directly, there are a number of predefined point file formats that are included for us in Civil 3D. However, none of them will include the additional values that the arborist has collected for us. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a standard one for point number, northern, easting, elevation, description, common and limited, because that's the closest one we have to the data that we received. So I'm going to copy that and we'll make a new one. And I'm going to rename the new one here just trees. And we'll keep the same fo file format as PNEZD. And I'm going to add some additional columns here to accommodate the new values. If we look in the list of those we have to pick from, we will see the new ones we created. So what the arborist gave us after the description was the species. Then it included the diameter. And then finally it included the condition. So we'll say OK. And we're ready to bring in our points. So coming up into Civil 3D, we are going to use the ribbon to insert point data from a file. We could select from the number of ones that are available as well as the new one we just created. And I'm going to add to it off my desktop here my park trees. We'll add those to a group just to keep them organized. We'll say OK and we'll process our tree data. What we see on the screen is all of our trees have been brought in and we see a traditional label of a point number, an elevation, and a description. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly save the drawing because as with an AutoCAD file everything doesn't always exist until it's saved. Once it's saved, if I highlight this particular tree, we'll right click and we will take a look at the properties or the, the um, information associated with a tree. And if I look at the panorama here quickly, as we scroll across, we see our label style all the way down to we now see that it includes the diameter, the condition, and also the species. So that information is now applied to the point. Now, when I print this off, maybe I'd like to see that information displayed on the object itself. We can easily accommodate that through a new label style. 
So we'll come down on our list, and right now we have one that's been set up for point number elevation and description. Much like we did with the point file format, we'll create a copy of that as our starting point. We'll call this tree label. And we'll come into our layout and just erase everything that's here, and we'll create some new values. So I'd like to maintain, perhaps, underneath my tree object, the uh, size and species of tree, and then underneath that, perhaps, a listing for its condition. So we'll create a new text value that's going to do size species. I would like that to be attached to the tree object at the bottom center. The text object itself I would like to be attached at the top center. and You can see as we change these values it automatically updates my display. And rather than it leading, reading label text we will instead add the new values we created. We'll start by clearing what's in the display here. And I will say the diameter in maybe an even increment. I don't need any decimals. I'll add that to my list. I'll put in an inches symbol so that it would read maybe 18 inch space and then we'll add the species. That looks pretty good. I'll accept that. We see the display on the screen. Maybe let's add a second value here. This one is going to be the condition and it will be anchored not to the feature but to the previous value we created. Much like the last one it will be anchored to the bottom center at the top center of our new label and instead of the label text reading label text we will instead have it read condition. We've constructed our new style that looks great I'm gonna say OK and we'll go ahead and apply it to our points. Now what I'm gonna do is I've got a point group that we created with respect to trees so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna edit the properties of that because it was a description key that associated these initially We'll go ahead and set this for uh, any new trees here to represent tree label. And I'm going to tell the system to override what was maybe applied by the description keys so that when we look at trees, we will, uh, we will see a tree label on the screen. And when we say OK, our trees are automatically displayed and labeled as they were collected in the field. Now, taking this one step further, perhaps we need to send the arborist back out or we need to send somebody out to remove or harvest some of the trees that are in poor condition. Can we quickly find those based on this data? And we absolutely can through a number of different mechanisms. First I could go to the standard AutoCAD properties and by going into my drawing and just doing a quick select, we'll say I'd like to search the entire drawing for Kogo points whose condition equals poor. And in doing so it will fan out and it will find in this case there were six objects. <coughs> Excuse me, we see them highlighted on the screen with respect to which objects are in poor condition. Now we look at that, that could be exported to a text file. That works great for us. Perhaps we'd like to get a little bit more sophisticated with it and have a point group that will accommodate that as well. Let's do this. We'll create a new point group such that we can dynamically pull poor trees. So we will establish that. I will tell the system to include, I will give it a sample value for right now for uh, TR for tree, that's what we use for our description. I will apply that and if we look at the list there are all of our trees. I'm then going to go into the query builder and I'm going to enhance that selection to instead include not the default values but instead the new values we created. So in this case we'll grab condition and its value that we are going to search for is poor. I will apply that and we will see we now have created a point group that will easily limit our point data to those trees that are in poor condition. Now that our task is complete we can sit and think for a moment about all the different possibilities that are now available to us using Civil 3D. On behalf of Autodesk, my name is Jerry Bartles, Civil Technical Specialist, and that concludes today's presentation.